Got a call one day from a friend, said he wanted me to come out to South Texas, had a lot of hogs, a lot of bobcats they needed taken out. What he didn't tell me is we're not gonna be sitting in a blind, we're not gonna be doing no stalking, we're gonna be in the air in a helicopter. The wild hog problem in Texas has gotten out of hand. In fact, they've taken to the air for what they call eradication hunts. Chopper pilot Josh Leiniger has invited his friend from North Carolina, Kevin Connor, to fly shotgun with the 223. If this footage looks familiar, it is because we ran this episode with Kevin Connor back in 2011. It was a weird feeling watching the pilot take the doors off the helicopter, knowing I was getting ready to get strapped in the back seat and could fall out at any time if the seatbelt failed. I worked with North Carolina Highway Patrol. Uh, before that, I worked with North Carolina Marine Patrol. We did a lot of training, shooting out of boats, shot out of cars, shot in firing ranges. I shoot two or three times a year for qualifications, but I've never shot out there. Back when we filmed this hunt with Kevin, there weren't that many aerial hog hunts going on. So it was quite a treat to ride along over the South Texas brush. AR-15, 30 round clips, one leg outside the chopper, and I just thought the whole time this is gonna be unreal. Josh talking to me on the radio and saying, I got hogs right here to my right. Just hold on, I'm gonna get you down in front of them. There's pigs right here, pigs right here to the right. It's actually a coordinated effort with the chase vehicle to pick up the dead hogs, but it's more like off-road chaos. Cassie driving a Toyota truck through the brush, briar, she's just running over everything. We'd point out where a hog would be, they'd load it in the truck, we'd go to another one. They'd load that truck, go to another one. So we'd have four or five hogs in the back of the truck, we'd go find another batch of hogs, shoot them down, find the chase vehicle again, redo the whole thing over. I've been in law enforcement for about 10 years now. I'm a state trooper in North Carolina. I've been in car chases, 120, 130 mile an hour. Got in a shootout, but shooting a hog out of a helicopter is just as much adrenaline as when I get into a chase or a fight on the side of the road. <laughs> what do you mean? What does a chase do for a guy? Hmm. Don't know how to put that one. Breaking news is first at five, a North Carolina state trooper is dead, shot and killed in the line of duty. But all of that happened just down the street from where I'm standing. Highway Patrol says Trooper Kevin Connor was making a traffic stop in Columbus County when the driver opened fire and took off. But I would ask on behalf of Colonel Glenn McNeil, Jr., the commander of the patrol, uh, that everyone would please keep the Highway Patrol, uh, the trooper's family, and the entire organization in your thoughts and prayers as uh, we are definitely grieving as a result of our loss. The uh, trooper uh, was transported to a local hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. Thank you. Our friend Kevin Connor's life ended alongside a dark highway in rural North Carolina. We dedicate this episode of Carnivore to a look back at a hero we had the pleasure of sharing hunting camp with as Carnivore continues. Something this fun has to be illegal. They got so many hogs on a lot of these ranches in Texas that sitting in a feeder putting corn out ain't cutting it anymore. They're using helicopters going down and shooting 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 at the time. North Carolina State Highway Patrolman Kevin Connor was part of our carnivore crew on a hunt in South Texas back in 2011. After I got out of the chopper and got the chase vehicle, we drove around maybe two or three minutes. I spotted an eight-point buck. Cuz, a monster. Kevin loved hunting. In fact, he loved just being in the outdoors. 
but that would all come to an end on a routine late night patrol in the woods of eastern North Carolina. The trooper pulled Davis over for speeding on Highway 701. Authorities say the officer was fired on shortly after he got to the vehicle window. The driver of that vehicle or the, the pickup truck I fired several shots striking the trooper as he was approaching the vehicle. Connor was shot near his eye and in his torso. The father of two died at the hospital. It is tough on troopers working the case. Um, he, he has been on the patrol for 11 years. Um, right, what else? A deranged idiot decided to kill Kevin Connor in cold blood. The only place big enough for the thousands of people turned out to be South Columbus High School in Tabor City, North Carolina. The crisp October air and the drone of the solitary bagpipe escort Kevin's casket as his wife Miranda, daughter Briley, and son Braxton look on. Trooper Grady, on your command. The funeral for our friend would be one for the ages. It's hard to comprehend what we're dealing with today. Strong emotions of anger, despair, and grief invade the soul. The gymnasium is packed, the auditorium standing room only. And still, thousands patiently stand outside to honor a man who meant so much to so many. Trooper Connor lived a life of sacrifice and service that will live beyond his transition from this life to the next. Carnivore may be a hunting show, and Pursuit may be a television channel for hunting and fishing, but on this day, we honor the memory of a friend who wore badge B551. A friend who worked hard, played hard, and hunted hard. According to his beloved mother, at the age of four years old, she knew and he expressed his determination of becoming a North Carolina State Trooper. As thousands look on, I can't help but be touched by the outpouring of support from complete strangers. I can't help but be moved by the strength of that one state trooper holding Kevin's very young son. In a way, that may be a good thing, that the impact of a day like this seems to escape those who are the youngest. Tragedy, it seems, knows no boundaries. It avoids explanation and tragedy seems to always escape any kind of a warning. On this morning, I know you have heavy hearts. Be proud of Kevin's legacy. Lord, I cannot believe this. I am so glad I came to Texas. Good Lord of mercy, I'm ready to go see that cat. He was huge. The last hunt we ever shared with Kevin right Connor as carnivore continues. My heart is beating 100 miles an hour right now. It was a funeral usually reserved for heads of state, but a North Carolina state trooper and friend to all of us here at Carnivore lost his life in the line of duty. And more than 6,000 people jam a high school campus for a tribute in rural North Carolina on a Sunday afternoon. I love you. North Carolina state trooper Kevin Connor's widow, Miranda, takes a break from the crowd for a special so visitor. He's, you know what he's doing right now? He's listening to your daughter play piano in the governor's mansion. Because <laughs> that was the only time a good song was played. <laughs> Former North Carolina governor Pat McCrory, who Kevin served in his security detail, shares a few touching moments. He was the best. Then Roy Cooper, the current governor, does what he can to help the healing. So many troopers who tell me what a wonderful person that he was something that may seem impossible to Miranda right now. It is a service that leads from a giant auditorium to an overflow crowd outside. 
Outside, it seems, is where Kevin was the happiest. And we found that out in South Texas several years ago. On my last day here, I was asked if I wanted to go on a bobcat hunt. And I said I would love to. When I was walking in, I was looking at the edge of the salt flats, just cactuses and everything had thorns sticking off of it. I was thinking, how could anything lift in here? Much less if I shoot one and it runs off, how am I gonna walk through it? This thing called a stick tease like a turkey feather, supposed to distract the animal's attention, set it up, stuck it right in the ground next to the call, hoping it would work. As the call was going, I was scanning left and right. As I scanned right, there was a couple old fence posts. To the right of the fence posts, I noticed a flicker. Off in the distance, we hear the sound of a seven-gun volley, and a lone bugler plays taps as the sun sets over eastern North Carolina. <laughs> Trooper Kevin Connor was a member of North Carolina Highway Patrol Troop B. His badge, B551, will never be worn in this state ever again. For three days, the flags from the Smoky Mountains to the Atlantic coast have been flying at half staff. Now a long motorcade snakes its way through the countryside for one final tribute at the final resting place for a fallen hero. My brother did not die in vain. He died as a hero. I said he died as a hero. And I loved him, and my heart is heavy, but I know that he's a great man, and I know, amen, that he's in a better place today. The sun sets on a remote cemetery in eastern North Carolina. Our friend Kevin Connor is laid to rest, surrounded by the people he loved the most. The guys in Troop B, and his family. It is my high honor to present to you his service weapon. Please know that the Highway Patrol will continue to support you in any possible way that we can. There is no thing too big or too small that you can ask our organization. Please know that we'll be there for you and I will be praying for you and praying for you and praying for you without ceasing. I promise you that I will do just that. Something's in that shadow. Looked over there, picked up my binoculars, glassed, found a bobcat. It's a bobcat in the shadow. I was looking at the bobcat, bobcat never seen me. Sitting there wondering, is he gonna make a move? Is he gonna see me? How I'm gonna get a shot on this animal? As I was sitting there staring at the bobcat, I noticed that he was scanning right and left trying to figure out if he was going to make an approach or at any second he could just turn around and go right back into the thick brush. I cannot move till he comes out to the sunlight. God, this is unreal. 
I took the call and cut it off completely one time for maybe 20 or 30 seconds. Cut it back on very low volume. I guess it got suspicious, started easing in very slowly. At that time, I knew I need to get on him, that this was gonna be the time it was gonna happen. As he passed behind the cedar post, that's when I made my move further to the right to get a shot. You could tell that the sun totally had him blind. He never seen me move. I just could not believe that he was closing in the gap from 80 yards, 70, 60, right on the 40, 45 yards. I already had the rifle set up on him, ready to make the shot. Wanted to give him one last time to stop. right in towards the call. Lord, I cannot believe this. I am so glad I came to Texas. Good Lord of mercy. I'm ready to go see that cat. He was huge. 15 minutes right on the edge of the brush. Lord have mercy. Unbelievable. I have killed deer. I have killed hogs, ducks. I have never killed a bobcat in my life. I have never experienced anything. My heart is beating 100 miles an hour right now. Good gosh. This is crazy. It is quite a while after the family has left. All who remain are the brothers in Troop B. Reluctantly, they yield to the reality that Trooper Connor is gone. And as a powerful final gesture, each leaves his handprint on the outside of Kevin's casket. Easy, easy. easy. Don't lift, just push. Yep. One, two, three. Right there. As I was trailing the bobcat, darkness was coming in. I was not giving up. Got a little bit of blood right here. A little more right here. I was gonna find that bobcat, even if it took till midnight. Got blood. After dark up here, it almost seems that the cactuses follow you wherever you go. There is no way this cat could run this far. As I looked over top of a cactus bush to the right, there he is. Seen him laying there dead. Here he is right here. Immediately walked up there to him. Oh man, look at this. Oh man. Look at this cat. Oh man. First bobcat I've ever killed in my life. Man. Man, look at the head on this thing. Hold on, let me get these cactuses out of my hand. Look at them, they're everywhere. I tell you, when he come walking out, the cactuses paused, looking at the feather. This is one of the coolest hunts I've ever been on. I cannot believe this is all happened in 15 minutes. I want you to know today that there has been a great man that's fallen from our community, from our county. And I'll guarantee you, we will surely miss his presence. Today, my prayer is that Trooper Connor's life will inspire us to live better lives. Lives of service to each other, 
and lives of gratitude for all who serve. I cannot believe this is all happened in 15 minutes. The image of him walking out of the brush is something I will never ever forget. I don't know. No better example exists anywhere for a man who loved the outdoors. North Carolina State Trooper Kevin Connor. He graced us with his enthusiasm, his spirit, his passion, his friendship. May we meet again on the other side, Kevin. Well, got a cat to skin and all kind of thorns and sticking into my body I had to pull out. It's been a great week in Texas. If I'm invited to come back again, I will definitely be back. If I knew Kevin, he would assure us, you know what, there's still good folks. There's still good folks in the world today. There's still things worth fighting for. To my hero and the best friend that I've ever known, Godspeed until we see each other in heaven again, my brother.